Hey everybody, it's John again with Terry from Firearms Legal Protection and today we have an interesting topic uh, and that is what are the questions that I should ask a, an attorney that I might retain to defend me if ever I have to use force to defend myself. And of course, the guys from Firearms Legal Protection are acutely interested in this topic, <laughs> so they have a really cool perspective. Let's talk about it. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight, and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. So once again, Terry, I really appreciate Firearms Legal Protection. I appreciate you guys not just being there to protect someone after a defensive incident, but to educate beforehand. Um, and, and so I'm gonna preface this by saying, uh, of course, if you are a member of Firearms Legal Protection, you guys have attorneys in all these states already interviewed, already part of the network so that- Vetted the whole nine yards. Yeah, vetted that they're, they have the right credentials and they're experts in their field. So right. uh, I know I've actually met a couple of the attorneys in Arizona and established a relationship with them already that God forbid it should ever happen, I know who's coming and, and what their stances are. And so right. I think the easy answer here is be a member of Firearms Legal Protection and then that work is already done for you. Yeah, and, and it's not only is it done, um, the interesting thing is it's kind of hard to do if you're behind bars. Right, really hard to do. So already done in advance. And not only the attorneys, but the bail bondsmen. Uh, and, and all and those so relationships are there. up and everything. We've, we've got you covered. Yeah. So, but not everybody's a member of the network right. and uh, of the legal protection. So uh, if I'm going to be smart in that instance and go and interview some attorneys and get to know who is it that I would want to call if God forbid, what are some of the questions that you would ask them? Well, before I get to questions with the attorney, the first thing I would want to do is make sure they're legitimate. Okay. So what do I mean by that? I would make sure that, um, number one, they're in good standing with the state bar that they're in. And should I'd, be a pretty easy online check, don't you think? Should be, but here's the thing, you know, have they been... Censured or... Censured or reprimanded by mm -hmm. the bar? If so, for what? You know, you've got some attorneys that uh, have been written up for not handling funds properly. Is that someone you want to deal with? You've got other attorneys that have been written up for not communicating with the client. Is that something you want, okay? So I would do some research first on the attorney. Once I've done that, I'd make sure I understand what is a what type of attorney are you looking for, okay? You're not gonna find an attorney marked, you know, I just shot somebody, oh my God, what do I do now, right? <laughs> yeah. Most of them are, you know, they're criminal, they're divorced, they're bankruptcy, things Real along estate, those lines. Yeah. Um, you don't want someone showing up to a scene um, that's the wrong kind of attorney. Let me give you a better example. Assume you just had a heart attack, okay? Right. They're wheeling you into the operating room. One of the last things you want to hear is, Mr. Correa, don't worry, the podiatrist will be here in five minutes, right? Right. Both doctors. He's, both doctors. But that's not the kind of doctor you need. You want to make sure you have someone that specializes in criminal, um, criminal defense. And when I say specialize, you don't want somebody that necessarily does everything. You know what do I mean by that? Some criminal attorneys only do um, 10, 20 percent criminal. They only handle misdemeanors. Some attorneys only, only handle drunk driving. You want somebody that, and this kind of gets into another part, that's been in the trenches. Have you, def have you done capital cases where someone's life is on the line? I've dealt with attorneys who kind of delved into this, and here's the problem. Um, I had one person, she called me, hey, I need your help. This is my first capital case, and this person should not have been doing capital work. But long story short, she was throwing up every night. She was sick. She couldn't handle the pressure of someone going to prison. Wow for the rest of their lives. You don't want someone practicing on you for the very first time. Nope. Okay. Well, and you said something I wanna go back to because you said you want a specialist. So you say, well, wait a minute, I want a criminal defense attorney. But like, okay, in Arizona, Title 13 is the criminal code. That's a huge code. There's so many areas of criminal law. 
right. that, that they could be a criminal defense attorney, but not in the specialty of self-defense or defensive gun uses. That's right. a whole specialty in and of itself. It is. It, it truly is. And you have to narrow this search down. And here's the interesting thing you said. Once you narrow it down, interview the attorneys. Let me help you. It's going to be very difficult. If you call me and say, hey, I might want to go with you, and just in case something happens, let's sit down and talk. Um, sure, let me tell you my hourly rate. Right. So we can sit down and talk because most attorneys are not going to do this for free. Right. This is not a consult because nothing's happened, right? So what do we generally do in the public is the following. We ask someone who doesn't know. We ask, hey, you used a guy for uh, who's a criminal defense attorney. Um, when you were in trouble, who is it? And it's a drunk driving guy. Right. Okay. Or who did your divorce? You know, my, my husband was involved in a shooting. He's in jail. I need somebody. Um, you have to be careful of what you're getting into. You don't want the guy on the side of the bus who's advertising or, you know, the guy that, you know, does all takes any and every kind of case. You want that person who's been in the courtroom. How do you find that? You ask an attorney that knows. It, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, John, you, you do a lot of training. And I can ask you, hey, John, who's a good trainer? I would take that, a firearms trainer. Yep. I would take that from John because John has over 600 hours of firearms training. He can tell me the good, the bad, who I should stay away from. Some. Yeah. But on the other hand... If I ask some guy down uh, who just sells ammunition and has a concealed pistol license, do you think they're going to have the same perspective that John has? Probably yeah. not. So you got to find someone to ask if you're looking for referrals. Well, and I think this is the same part where, okay, so so Terry, you are my friend, and you're a, an attorney and a criminal defense attorney. But I had a contract question recently, not with you, but I didn't ask you about it. Correct. Because you're not a contracts attorney. Exactly. And I'm like, I, I don't want to ask Terry about that. And, I, but do I have some knowledge of it? Yeah. Yeah. But most people aren't going to sit back and say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to look foolish and, you know. No, I don't have that knowledge. So he did the right thing by going to someone else who's got the better knowledge. Go, has that knowledge. So I, th I think I did hear you say, if I'm going to uh, maybe interview a couple of attorneys, I should expect that I'm going to pay them for an hour of their time. Absolutely. And that might be three, dollars $400 a piece. Well, let's say it's $300. Let's just go on the low end. Okay. You interview me for an hour and you don't like me. So guess what? You've wasted 300 now you go next door and interview someone else for $300. You don't like them. This could be costly finding what you're looking for. And again, a lot of times you don't know what you're looking for. So I just came up with this idea. If you don't know what you're looking for, I just thought of this literally while we're talking on camera. Let's just say I'm going to interview two separate attorneys. That's 600 bucks. Well, well, guys, that's multiple years of being a part of firearms legal protection. Oh, yeah. So you, Good point. You'd just rather, for gracious sakes, instead of investing that money, why wouldn't I just do that and then have the, the network behind me if, God forbid, I ever had to use it? It just makes sense to me. Well, now, you know if what? you don't want to do that because you're <laughs> you know, uh, an in independent person, knock yourself out. Well, you know, and it's interesting because I fly all over the country and I actually interview attorneys. I just don't pull them up off of the website and mm. say, these are the people that are in our network, et cetera, et cetera. So I interview them and they have to have certain criteria. You know, um, you just can't be right out of law school and take this case. Right. You've got to show that you've actually done some kind of um, capital case, that you've handled self-defense cases, cases with firearms, uh, things along those lines. Mm. We've got a few attorneys in the network that we will send out their criminal attorneys, um, part of our emergency management team. Those are the ones that come out to the scene. They're the one, we also have the bail bondsmen, the um, incident scene cleanup. Those, that group, again, we call them the emergency management team because they're there for the first 24 to 72 hours. I've got some attorneys in there that are really good, but I would never put them in a trial perspective. Hmm. Because so that's, that specialty is not trial law. Correct. So the ones that will show up are criminal defense. They're really good. They've got experience going to the scene. But I've got one or two in that group that have not 
met the criteria I need for them to represent you in a court of law. So, okay, so backing up to the original idea here, I am going to ask them, number one, what their specialty is in criminal law. Number two, if they have defended, how many self-defense cases they have defended. Uh, if they've ever done this to the level of capital offense, because Correct. I could be uh, attributed to that. Uh, and, and so these are, and, and I think personally as well, I want to know what's your philosophy of, uh, of self-defense and what is your understanding of the Second Amendment, of the right to self-defense, the right to keep and bear arms? Because I got to tell you, I want an attorney who sees that from my perspective. You know what a lot of people ask? They want a win-loss record. And let me tell you, truly that's not important because hmm. winning means different things to different people. So, for example, if you're charged with um, first-degree murder and it gets knocked down to manslaughter, is that a win? Depends on the side that you look at it from. Right. Prosecutors will say on one side, we won because we got someone... We got a conviction. Got a conviction. A good criminal defense attorney will say, well, that's a win because you know what? He's got an out date. I went from this point till he'll be out in four years. That's a win. So when you say win-loss, you have to really put that in perspective. Well, and, and so I also think there's something here that that, that win-loss may not be up to the attorney. It's up to that connection with the client. I know I, I, was, um, I was talking with, I'll just be a little circumspect here, but a prominent attorney in Arizona uh, about a, a client who he got a heck of a plea bargain to but his client just said, absolutely not. I'm not stipulating that I did anything wrong. I will fight it all the way in court. And he says, dude, they're charging you with two felonies. And instead, yeah. I can get you out of here with a brandishing charge that is probation. You don't lose your firearms rights. You don't have any jail time or nothing. Sold. Sold all day, right? <laughs> Sold. But, but this guy, this client says, absolutely not. I will not stipulate. It's a principal thing. I won't do it. So, of course, this attorney is, okay, I'm going to go to court with you. Um, right. We're, we're going to go, but but this is your risk, not mine. Well, if that guy gets convicted, to me, that's not a fault of the attorney. The attorney did what they should have done. The attorney got him a great deal and did what the attorney was supposed to do. And the, in this case, the client said, this right. isn't good enough. Now, the client, I, in my opinion, knowing what I know, is correct. He didn't do anything wrong. So he's like, nope, I'm going to stand and do that. Now, of course, the attorney's going, <laughs> you're killing me here because this is costing you thousands of dollars and you know all this. But So maybe that is that a win-loss problem? It's not. It's are they adept at that? Do you think it's good to ask, can I talk to some of your previous clients and, and ask them how, they've de how they felt like your service was and how you represented them? You know, I, I'm torn on that because mm. here's the thing. Number one, um, I can give you a list of names, but like anything else, they're all going to be great names. Yeah, I'm not going to give you the one who says I'm a dirtbag, right? Right, right. You know, um, the other part about that is, you know, that's not how this business works, mm. okay? You're right. There's got to be a fit between you and I. There's got to be experience on the side of the attorney. And sometimes this is not about right and wrong. It's not like I didn't do anything wrong because under the law, you probably did. And it becomes like a casino, like I tell people all the time. You know, the closer you get to trial, it, it's a gamble. In, in other words, if we can work something out, and as you know, the attorney in Arizona is just talking about, if I can get, keep you your firearms rights, keep you out of jail, no probation, et cetera, guess what? That looks really good versus going to prison for 15 years. Yeah, it really does. So the closer you get to trial, the more of a gamble it becomes. And principles, while they're important, you have to look at what if I lose. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the fault of the attorney because you can be as right as you believe you are but your attorney knows how the system works in your state, your county, the jury pool, the judge. There are lots of little things, you know, because again, if I'm in one courtroom, yeah. that's a completely different um, animal versus literally going next door in the same building. So if I'm going to go and look for an attorney, I have some significant things that I have to ask. I have to do some research and I'm going to have to invest a bunch of money. 
uh, because they're not going to talk to me for nothing, which I wouldn't expect them to because then they just spend all their time talking to people and right. not doing their job. And, and so it seems to me that, I mean, honestly, the best way to get about this, because this is, could be a life and death thing. Uh, this is, we're talking about the rest of your life that you're, that you're looking at, is uh, to do something like firearms legal protection. There are several companies that kind of do similar stuff. Right. And so I'm not one of those who say, you know, if you don't sign up for these guys right now, you're, you know, wasting your life. No, no, no. No. Uh, that's not the case. And there are a couple of other companies as well that you could investigate. I have chosen Firearms Legal Protection. They're who I recommend and who I use. Um, but go do your research there. Seems to me, though, that, that having one of those is the smart way to go here because of the vetting issue. Exactly. And let me say this. Like, like I mentioned earlier, the time to find an attorney is not once you're in a situation. You're not going to be Googling, right? You don't want to yeah. be on your phone like... <laughs> Find me a self-defense attorney in my area. Yeah, it's, or, it, at that point, it's over. If you're ancient, flipping through the yellow pages, right? So, right. Uh, Terry, I appreciate that discussion. And, and so I just encourage you, figure this stuff out now, guys. So then that way, if God forbid you're under the stress of now fighting the fight for the rest of your life because you just had to defend yourself with your firearm, that's one thing that's already taken care of and you know what you're doing. And now it's a question of calling the attorney, not finding one. Terry, I really appreciate the talk, man. Thank you.